Have you been trying to learn how to use one of these? Well, I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as I can. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Todd Coons. If you've not been here before, thanks for stopping by. And today, I'm gonna to try to make some sense out of using flash photography. I've been seeing a lot of videos lately where people are trying to explain how to use flash photography. And when you watch a couple, you know how YouTube will eventually, or almost immediately really, start suggesting other people's videos that are talking about flash photography. So I've been watching several videos recently of people trying to explain how flash photography works. And although most of these videos are really pretty good, they have got some great information, what I find is that if you are new to flash photography, it's probably a little confusing. Because I think in a lot of cases, they just take it a little too far, they explain too much. So I'm taking it upon myself to do a very simple explanation of how flash photography works. Now there are a lot of times when you might need a flash for your photography, but for the basics and the simplicity of this video, Let's just say that it's just too dark in your scene to use ambient light alone. Whether it be a dark room, you're at a wedding reception that's poorly lit, it's just too dark to use existing light, so you need to bring in a flash. Now typically you would base your exposure on three things. ISO, shutter speed, and the aperture. A combination of those three things is what you would use in order to make a proper exposure with ambient light or existing light. However, with flash photography, shutter speed no longer plays a part of it. The three things that control flash exposure are the power that you set your flash at, the aperture that you set your lens at, and the ISO or the sensitivity of the sensor. Now let me show you a little example that I did in my studio. I had my flash power set at 1 8 At 1 8 power of my flash, it was putting out an aperture reading of f11. I put my shutter speed at 2 50th of a second, and if you notice on my camera, 2 50th of a second has a little x next to it. That's the sync speed, which is the fastest shutter speed you can shoot at. Now I told you that shutter speed doesn't have anything to do with flash exposure, and it doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with the exposure, however, because of the way the shutter works and the curtains are opening and closing, you cannot be at a shutter speed higher than your sync speed. So the first exposure that I'm gonna take is 2 50th of a second, F11 at 160 ISO. I'm gonna then go on and take a series of photographs, opening my shutter speed, one stop each time. So I did 125, 60, 30, 15th, and then finally I'm gonna to jump to a full second exposure. As I run through these exposures, you'll see that the flash exposure doesn't change at all. The output of the flash is the same, the aperture is the same, the ISO stayed the same, so the flash exposure didn't change. There wasn't enough ambient light for the shutter speed to allow any more light into the camera. However, you will see at one second, the window light coming into the room was starting to affect the exposure, but that had nothing to do with changing the flash exposure. Now, I will admit to you guys that doing tutorials on YouTube is difficult because I find it hard to sit here and explain to you in a way that makes sense. If you were here in the room with me, you could ask a question, hey, what do you mean by that? And I could easily explain it but to make a short little video to explain some things is difficult. So I'm hoping that I'm making some sense. So when you set your flash to a certain power and find the aperture that gives you a proper exposure at whatever ISO you've set your camera at, the shutter speed is not going to affect the flash exposure. It will affect any ambient exposure that happens to be in the room. My studio happened to be pretty darn dark, so it took a lot, it took a full second before I got any ambient light creeping in. So without making this any more complicated than I need to, let me throw out one more thing if you're a new flash user, and that's putting your flash into TTL mode. Now TTL stands for through the lens, and it's the automatic setting that when you put your flash on TTL, the flash will automatically send out the proper exposure and turn itself off when it gets there. And it does that reading, kind of like a meter reading, through your lens. So the easy way to use TTL mode is to set the aperture on your camera that you want. Say you want f4, 
put the flash on TTL, put the shutter speed at a place where you're comfortable with, knowing that it's not going to change the exposure here. It's only going to attribute to the ambient light. And when you're at F4 TTL with the flash, the flash will know to give F4 every single time. If you put it on F5.6, the flash will know, put out enough light to make a good exposure at F5.6. So whatever aperture you desire to shoot at, TTL mode will give you that amount of flash. The only disclaimer to let you know about is if you have an overly bright scene, like a bride in a white gown on a white wall, or a groom on with a dark tux and he's standing in front of a dark wall. An overly light or an overly dark scene can fool the TTL metering. That's the only thing. Just keep in mind, it's going to see things as like a middle gray tone. And if your scene is not middle gray, it can get fooled. But TTL mode is a wonderful way to use a flash. When I'm at a wedding reception, that's usually the mode I'm in. I dial in the aperture that I want, put it in TTL, and I walk around photographing people dancing or cutting cakes or whatever they're doing and my flash usually will give me a very accurate exposure. So guys, I hope that was somewhat helpful. I tried to make it as simple as I could. I know flash photography is complicated, especially if you're just starting out. There's a lot of voices coming from different directions telling you different things, and it really doesn't need to be any more complicated than what I tried to just make it. But if you've got questions, leave them in the comment section. I would love to answer those. And if you got a comment, let me know. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. It is Friday, so I'm looking forward to an exciting weekend. We're going to go hiking, so hopefully I can share a little bit of that with you. You guys have a great weekend, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.